So the 3D printing industry really has a problem with the files that actually make the printing possible. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how we kind of got here and kind of go through a few of the solutions that ourselves and other people are trying to use to solve this problem of STL theft. So today, if you are looking for a part to be printed, you will generally go to some 3D printing repository. It might be Thangs, Cults, Thingiverse, whatever it happens to be. All of those repos let you download a file. Sometimes you have to purchase the file, sometimes you can download it for free. And that's all fine and dandy. But the problem comes when once that file is downloaded, now that file is lost and gone. So a designer who has spent hours or weeks or months even perfecting a model and verifying it and prototyping it and then placing it out there in the world, as soon as that first file is downloaded, it's gone. That file can be shared through Google Drives on Etsy. It can be reposted to a repo, but it's just a really bad system. It's even worse for professional designers who actually use resources like subscriptions on Patreon to pay for their files. As soon as they upload a new file to the Patreon, they lose control of that file. They also have no control of the file when people download it. Generally on Patreons, there are different tiers of like personal power user and commercial user, but a commercial user could get access to a bunch of the files, bulk download them all, and start selling them without any sort of recourse and no payments going back to the actual designer. There's all kinds of ways of gaming the system, and it is hurting designers, because as the 3D printing continues to grow, those files effectively become the apps that are used on these printers. Now, there are a lot of pie-in-the-sky ways of dealing with this. Oh, the blockchain lets you do tracking, and oh, we can do Uber checking, and so on and so forth. None of that stuff actually works right now, and we have to take the world as it is, not as we would like it to be. So what can we do right now? Well, as far as managing the STLs themselves, Thangs is actually probably in the best position to do this right now. Since they actually have a search engine that is able to analyze a 3D model and determine how different or alike it is, they can at least manage reposting on their platform. You're still able to download an STL and then distribute it other places if you're a nefarious actor, but they have some way of checking it. And as they continue to grow and more designers move towards Thangs and start to use it exclusively, it self-perpetuates and protects itself more and more and more compared to the other platforms that are just posting sites. Now this is not a sponsored video by Thangs. They are simply the only platform that is doing file analysis and search in a way that none of the other repos really are. The other repos are creating a user experience around distributing files for a particular machine, but that's not terribly useful. Though credit to those other repos, they are starting to move away from the idea of simply sharing the STL and instead sharing the G code. This is a little bit better because the G code is specific to a particular machine. So it's limited a little bit in how much it can be distributed and also restricts it to just personal use. A commercial print farm generally cannot or will not or does not want to use a single G code that was generated for a particular file, especially if it was engineered in a particular way to have multi-materials or be printed with particular settings, whatever it happens to be. That amount of platform specificity creates a lot of friction when trying to duplicate that file around and use it in other places. So using pure G code rather than sharing the actual 3D models themselves is a really useful way of doing this. But there's a way of taking that even further. And this is a, the idea that we've kind of adopted. We're a print farm, so people send us files. One of the things that we work on constantly is dealing with the problem of, is this the legitimate user of this file? This is something that we really care about because as people are sending us stuff through things like our API or the Etsy plugin, we would like to know if they're licensed as best as we possibly can. But there's no real good way for us to police and know that because there's no single repo to compare against and who was the first one to make it is really ambiguous. US. The way we have decided to kind of deal with it is we made a first version called Catalog inside of our Etsy plugin. This is where fully approved and licensed 3D models are available for sellers to use. The sellers are able to purchase access to that model, but they do not get the model. This is a much better way of protecting the designer because the designer can upload the 3D model to our system. We can slice it, make sure it works through our farms, but any of the users who are using our print farm to fulfill prints for them, they will receive prints of those files. They don't get access to the files, they just get permission to have us print parts for them, which means that no file is ever exchanged. This is really great for the designer because at any time, if the designer decides, I don't want that file to be out there in the world anymore, I'm going to pull it, then it is pulled from all those sellers. It's a single point of control to where a designer can upload a single model People can use it in whatever means they want to within whatever tier that they're allowed to. And then the designer at any time has full control to pull that thing out of the internet and make it disappear. 
Now there are some downstream challenges to this because a whole bunch of sellers can get in real big trouble if the designer wants to jerk the file. But again, this goes back to the idea of like iPhone apps. An iPhone app developer can pull the app anytime they want to because it's their app. They're allowed to do that. As far as what we're doing with the catalog though, we're not able to continue to do this. It's, it's a project that we've had and we will come back to to develop at some point, but it's not a core feature that we need to focus on right now because our job is to make the parts. So if I was doing anything with this video, I'd kind of like to request someone take over catalog. You can have the idea. The way to work is you can build out effectively a designer repo where you can have a login portal where designers can upload files and manage royalties from sales there. Then you can plug in the other side of the API to a print farm like us so that again, you have full control of when and where those files go. Then the designer gets a royalty from each one of the prints of their file rather than just the sale of the subscription of the file. Sellers can plug into your catalog to have those listings printed off through our print farm around the world, wherever it happens to be. And it's a really useful application. You're able to build on top of our API to get access to large print farm capacity. You're able to collect designers and give them a protected place to put their files and have ongoing revenue from the success of those files. If they blow up, the designer sees some of the result and kickback from that, which is not possible right now. They might get a bunch of Patreon subs for a little bit, but then it can go back down if they don't keep on churning out new stuff. This system allows them to actually have sustainable long-term recurring revenue as if they were the author of a book and that book is published for the next 100 years. If someone continues to print their file, then they will continue to get royalties from those prints. So it's just a much better system of dealing with it because it's not sharing the files at all, it's sharing the prints of the files and allowing access to the manufacturability of those prints. So that's kind of our plug on STLs. It's a really bad spot right now. We've taken a stab at it. Thangs has taken a stab at it. And there's more ways to expand on this. And it's actually really valuable to a fairly big part of the industry that will continue to grow because there will be many, many more 3D models made throughout the world. And protecting those models is really important. And there's no way to do it right now. So someone out there, please take our catalog concept and run with it. We don't have enough time for this stuff. We built the API, we will make the API better for you. So if you need a feature, just let us know and we'll build that out. But go build that repo to where designers can upload a model, sellers can get access to the prints of the model, and then the designer can get royalties from all of the prints and that way the file never disappears onto the internet. Have a great day, everybody.